Okay, folks, you're going to see why I need this kind of truck for when we do wind sights. I think we'll cross it. Let's see. You can see the roads are outstanding. Let's see. We're going to go ahead and did this coming in at two wheel. Let's go to four wheel this time. that one next. Once we get through this. It's a nice view though. We're averaging about uh, oh, five minutes a tower on this trip for testing. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, somebody recently asked me why we need to use off-road vehicles to do uh, wind turbines. So let's, uh, let's explore a typical road. Now this is fun because I remember going and flying in somewhere and having rented a four-wheel pickup truck and they wanted to upgrade me to a Mustang and the roads were were far, far worse than this one at that site. So I was like, okay, uh, rental company, uh, why don't you sign me um, or, or have me sign off so I'm not responsible for the condition of this Mustang that you gave me after I asked for a heavy vehicle. So uh, typical when I'm dealing with ranches and farms where a lot of these things are, you can see what's the vehicle in front of me go I am now in four-wheel drive you can see the washout these are pretty typical there is no other way in uh, down we go whoa yeah woo <laughs> and then um so this is a Silverado um ooh, ah. yeah that's swinging uh, yeah the phone's pretty much fixed <laughs> So uh, anyways, yeah, this is a, an off-road um, Silverado, and there's a reason why I, I use these. Somebody said, well, whatever, and it's like, yeah, well, sorry. The type of vehicles people were suggesting do not fly very well in this environment. So with that, uh, enjoy the view, and uh, we are gonna continue with our Empath electrical signature analysis testing of over 100 turbines in just a few days. And if you looked at the timestamp on the last one, you notice it's only a couple of minutes between towers, and we are in the tower less than five minutes. So, um, and all the all the results are automatic, so we're providing live condition as we go through, including um, you know how much longer the tower has or, or or severity. With that, talk to you more later. Of course, we also get those stretches where, you know, we've got actual highway, but that's in between um, the towers. So we're heading out to another spot. Let's see, you know, nice country. I, I missed the, there's another um, company site to the left, another generation site, the one on the right of the GE towers we're looking at. In general, you know, Straightforward stuff, looking at the entire powertrain, about a minute, 
48 seconds to rule the world. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this now for you know, 2003. I started doing field work with uh, electrical signature analysis looking at the gearboxes. So, in any case, I guess now we're going to look for a way over, not clear on the condition of the where we're going some of the some of the roads are pretty uh, extravagant but, uh, here we go I guess uh, doing the podcast is all I'll show a couple of sites it's always fun following a Another tech on the road. <laughs> yeah, it's it's about that clear. Uh, you see the dust spot. And you're actually the the camera's off to the right, so it's easier to see on that side, on the driver's side. Um, I've got to watch for lights. That's why we follow so far in between. There's also a crack in my windshield already, but it's not from following close. It was from somebody else um, on the highway nearby who got on the road. With pouring out. So in any case, yeah, we'll, we'll just show you coming up to a typical tower. Um, that off-road bit was, was uh, you know, not, not as severe as some I've been on. Some have been to the point where we've actually had to hike. Um, but let's just say your average um, vehicle, uh, especially heavier vehicles, will not survive this. This is part of the reason why you know, we drive pickup trucks, which are much lighter than, say, a full-size SUV. They also have to be up off the ground a little bit, um, because some of the areas we go in are, are pretty drastic. Say, you know, potholes here. Uh, well, I guess I'm a little used to it. I've driven in in, in Manhattan and Chicago and Illinois, I should say, and, and a few other areas where, you know, potholes can be exciting. Back in two-wheel drive, by the way, we don't need four-wheel for this. And, you know, some of the sites are interesting. I mean, it's an interesting-looking barn thing off there on the, the right. Okay, it looks like we're going to go down to the furthest one, turn around, and come back. These are, you know, these are farm roads too. So farm, these are actually made by the the um, wind company. Um, they make them put gravel down and stuff like that. They have to be set up be able to handle cranes and heavy vehicles. Um, you know, some of the roads we went on, they'd actually end up uh, going through with a grater or something to, to clean it up if they were to go in to do a gearbox or something. You can see we're on farmland right now. Um, so it's very, very delicate here. Uh, there is no going off the, the things. We do not want to run over farmers' crops. That's a big no-no. Um, Sometimes we run into where a farmer will park in, in the <laughs> right on, on the this part of it. It can get pretty exciting. But in any case, uh, here we are at the next tower. Time to go on board. Another time I'll I'll do something about how to enter and set up. But uh, you know, for now, we'll talk more later. Now, if I get a chance here, I'm gonna give you some perspective because I'm hearing a lot about, you know, oh uh, a tornado could do like whatever, wipe out the grid or something like that. Well, right now we are 10 miles from um, the middle of this one particular site with several hundred turbines uh, present. And the, what we're looking at to the right and in front, that is a whole other site. That's, that's not the group we're working with, that's somebody else. Um, we're about to head down to another group of towers, so I'm gonna be turning away from the main fields. There's no way a single tornado is gonna to take out more than a handful of towers. And um, at any given time, it's basically what you have down um, for maintenance, so 
Yeah, I, I, a lot of the guff I'm seeing on, on the news is just that. It's it's drama to, to get headlines and feed on the, the concerns of people that an alternative energy source, really, I mean, at some point it became political. Um, I don't see it as political. I just see it as another energy source as far as I'm concerned. I've been, you know, the past month I've been on drill sites testing. I've been on fracking sites. I've been on wind sites. I've been to solar sites. Um, been to a number of other types of energy sites. Uh, oh, that thing on to the, to the right over there, that's, that's a weather tower. That's not a cell tower. Um, they, they set those in strategic spots uh, for determining what wind speed is. The one over there on the right, that is, uh, if you can see it, that is a cell tower. But, um, yeah, when we when we turn around uh, to the far right, just out of the picture, I think, is, is a whole slew of other ones. We get to this tower down here on the left. When I circle around, you probably get, you know, in the distance, but you'll, you'll get some idea of, um, you know, an area that has uh, wind, um, you know, and like I said, you would need, uh, here you'd need a 20 mile wide tornado uh, <laughs> to take out every turbine. Uh, in the meantime, you're talking about, you know, one of the areas that's, that's the highest in the U.S. for, for total wind. Um, and occasionally, if, if I do some, you know, if I take another video or two here, you'll see the, the oil pump, you know, the oil heads, um, pumping oil, stuff like that. Here we go. So, give you just a perspective. Uh, we're at the far side of this park, and oh, there's a deer. That is cool. Is that a deer? Yeah, that is cool. Or an antelope? No, it's. Ah, there's more. Yeah. So anyways, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of wild stuff out here, but you see everything. We're gonna have to wait a second until they clear out. But anyways, um, talk to you more after. Okay, so we just got the heads up that what looks beautiful and sunny, this area tends to change very quickly. So just got a heads up that there's gonna be a lightning warning shortly so we're going to finish up two more towers i'm going to go ahead and leave this on record so you get an idea of the length of time to do two towers and uh, again uh, the road typical this tower we're skipping so i already did rings and some other stuff that our, our client did. Uh, we're, we're contracted for this site to do the work. Um, tend not to do direct, so people usually work through their repair center. Neither their techs or if their techs aren't available, you know, regardless of that. Well, basically every major wind repair center utilizes us one form or another as well as OEMs. So, um, I like getting out once in a while to verify that everything's working the way it should and, and that, uh, you know, we're giving people basically uh, what I would want. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm lazy. I want quick, easy, and accurate um, and, and inexpensive, which apparently everybody keeps telling me that's not possible, but uh, when we've heard costs associated with some of the other stuff, I go, yeah, I guess it is possible. Um, you know, the system's not working off machine learning. It's, it's an expert system. There's, on the continuous side, there's some. Oh, we're going to have to pull straight in on this one, looks like. So, um, yeah, pull a little forward. So I don't have the okay to show people's faces. So we're not going to do that. Okay, so we're going to park, and we are going to test and uh, enjoy the park for a couple of minutes.
Okay. On to the last tower. Okay, and that will be the last tower right there. And then we got a 12, 12 mile drive back to the main spot, the office. But I'm not gonna keep you on for that, not, not an issue. It's all just you know, a few things, country roads and the like. But in any case, yeah, so we're doing it. It's right now. 105 degrees Fahrenheit outside or just over 40 degrees centigrade. Um, I'm not going to show you what I'm wearing just because it's not the purpose of this one, but I am in long sleeve FRs. Uh, electrical, uh, well, yeah, electrical gear, helmet, um, all that neat stuff and just enjoying this weather. So we keep the trucks running. Ah, well, a few bugs decided to join us. So we keep the uh, the trucks running um, for for um, safety purposes. Yeah. Oh, I guess we're going all the way around. Um, and. Uh, That way we stay cool. Um, so I got the truck set for about 70, so it's not too much of a shock in between. And then, uh, and then lots of fluid. I think I'm on my second uh, two liter bottle of water. Uh, so today, and I haven't had to run to the restroom. So um, it gives you an idea of the shape I'm in, which is why I'm not gonna show you anything. Anyways, we're going to jump in the next tower and you'll get an idea.
Well, south of here, west of that. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly. Okay, let's head back. So, we just finished two towers. The guys I'm talking to are one's a Navy vet and one's a Marine vet. So we knocked out, we still had another hour to go, we basically knocked out 45 towers. That's actually a record for me, um, typically takes a bit longer, but starting to my electrolyte drink here. I am soaked, soaked, soaked. Ah, good, a bath. <laughs> Yeah, try to avoid puddles when you're out here. So, um, luckily, I have experience driving through Illinois and Indiana and a couple other states where they've been doing a really crappy job with the uh, with the uh, asphalt. So it comes up almost immediately afterwards, and you have tank traps. So I'm used to avoiding those at speed. So here it's normal. Uh, again, they normally don't clear anything up unless they grade it. So somebody said, uh, why, why didn't you get uh, an electric car? Or aren't you interested in this Cybertruck? Actually, I am. Um, problem is, is uh, you know, for a job like this, I've got to drive to get to the site from a hotel. It's a um, good solid 40 minutes, highway speeds. Highway speeds in this area are 75, and then, um, oh, and then, uh, um, then on site, going from tower to tower, so starting and stopping, um, you also have to leave the vehicle running, as I'm sure you heard. Um, the vehicle um, you have to leave the vehicle running to keep it cool inside. Uh, you know, it's. It's good, solid, 10 to 20 degrees hotter inside uh, the base of one of these types of towers because they have the, um, um, oh, there's a nice picture on the right. And it's a different farm. Um, we're doing the ones kind of on the left. Let's see if I can move this over a bit. So we're driving right through wind country, I guess you could call it, um, for this area. There's a lot of wind in this area. It is Texas. It is number one in the nation by a long shot, and actually more wind than um, in most uh, smaller countries, um, including some of the European countries. So just Texas alone makes up for a big chunk of the 72 to 73,000. I didn't look this morning. Right, roughly about 72,000 to 73,000 operating towers that haven't been decommissioned. I, I, sometimes I've quoted higher than that, but sometimes they're decommissioned. I mean, we've had towers up since the end of the 1990s. They were smaller. Oh, I'm going too soon. They, you might get a chance to, to see some of the blades. Um, these are off of older towers. Somebody suggested that the blades are 33,000 pounds. Somebody else said 81,000 pounds. Those are hollow. Uh, they're not particularly long. Uh, that particular one, that's an older style off of a GE. So that would weigh under um, 93 to 9,800 pounds or somewhere in that area. Uh, some of the newer carbon fiber way less. Um, just, you know, stuff. Um, we keep hearing, I keep hearing things. Uh, for those who, who suggested to me many years ago that two and a half billion birds killed by wind turbines, <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be, you'd see 2,000 birds per each of these towers per minute. <laughs> just not possible. Um, 
I have not yet seen a, a bird death near a tower uh, at 6,000 towers I've been to. Usually raptors and things like that scatter when they start to turn. Um, I, the only time I've seen or talked to somebody who suggested that there's there's a large number of bird deaths at a specific site is when um, a university, some, some uh, PhD, decided to put, uh, you know, a device in to cause uh, bats to avoid the towers and it actually attracted them and um, that, that got the, the owners a little upset um, outside of that no not really it's, on this trip I did see a bird death um, I, I parked at the hotel and while unpacking my truck a bird flew into the windshield of my truck um, don't know why um, truck was parked uh, hotel but, you know, that goes along with, you know, <laughs> seeing birds dive in front of vehicles. I had one a few weeks ago just fall out of the sky while I was driving down the highway. Uh, apparently died in the air and fell and, and I clipped it. Uh, or, I mean, I hit it with the front because, you know, it's still there. But anyways, or it was. So, um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I love the area. I, I love going to wind farms. There's there's no cities or towns nearby. Um, oh, off to the right looks like they are doing some type of major work. It looks to me like they are doing. They're setting up to do a gearbox. So they got everything there, just not the crane yet. Um, so these are some GEs on the right, and those across the way, those are Siemens Gamesa. Those are 2.3 megawatt. The towers that I was testing that I that you saw, those are 1.8 megawatt each. Um, that means that uh, when they're running full load, um, you know, we were pretty close to that. The wind speed uh, for this trip has been, um, oh, anywhere from 8 to 10 meters per second, uh, which uh, puts uh, them pretty close to full load. The only time we ran into anything was a little bit of curtailment. So anyways, this is going to be my next podcast, uh, so I um, uh, hope you enjoyed this part of it. I cannot, uh, could not, for this site, could not show you inside the towers, could not show you how everything's done or set up, um, but now you're getting an idea of how large these things are. We're still passing the site um, where we were on the left, we're turning in towards it now to head down that last stretch. In any case, uh, so this is it. Um, I'm going to piece these all together and maybe put a little narration in there. It started out just want to give a few idea, a few people some ideas of why I drive a vehicle like I do. If I work in things like wind, and of course I don't just work in wind. I work in wind, and I work in oil, and I work in uh, solar, and I work in hydro, and I work at you name it. Um, it's, it's all about just generating extra energy. Um, again, not a politician. I am one of the engineers involved in all of this stuff. Bigger part, uh, biggest part we have to deal with right now is increasing reliability of a few things and uh, helping, uh, you know, set up uh, set up everything else. Approaching the site, so uh, I'm going to sign out. 